Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be getting ready using all new makeup. I have a collection of products here that mostly are still in boxes I've never worn. I also have a few items that I've been wearing maybe for the last few weeks, and I thought it'd just be fun to kind of do my makeup on camera and play with new products and let you guys know what I think. I have some products from NARS, I have some products from Alter Ego, I have some products from Pixie by Petra, I have a Salt New York palette, and then I also have a, um, a couple products from Revitalash random enough some samples that I got at Nordstrom. So that is what we're gonna do. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get the hair back. Um, and we will get started. As far as what I have on my skin right now, all I have done is prepped my skin with my normal skincare products. So I'm excited to try this. This is a sample. This was like thrown into a purchase that I made uh, at Nordstrom. It is by Revitalash Cosmetics. It's the Aqua Blur Hydrating Eye Gel and Primer. So it appears to be an eye gel and a primer. Let's see if there are any instructions on here or description on what it is. Okay, it says, before applying aqua blur, begin with daily use of Revitalash Cosmetics, yada, yada. Um, dispense aqua blur onto fingertip and gently smooth along the orbital bone, including the under eye area. Follow with makeup application. Okay, so it looks like it's just an under eye primer, maybe? So let's dive into this. I'm always up for trying primers under the eye that'll help make my concealer and makeup look smoother, maybe help minimize texture. We shall see how this does. Okay, I only get about one use out of this. Okay, so it has kind of like a jelly-like consistency. It's kind of like very, definitely has like a very silicone um, feel to it. All right, so I'm gonna kind of warm this up between my fingers and I'm going to just kind of put it underneath my eyes, patting, patting it in under the eyes and around the orbital bone. I'm actually gonna take what's left and kind of rub it on my cheeks. Really put it here where my pores are a little bit larger. I do feel like it's, like it's uh, making my pores look less noticeable, which I'd expect with that kind of feel. Okay, let me zoom you guys in closer so we can see the makeup as I get started. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with foundation. I'm gonna be using the new NARS foundation. This is the Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I have used this a couple of times. In fact, I filmed a review on this, which will probably be up by the time this video goes up. So you'll kind of have my thoughts on it. Um, but I like it, I've worn it a few times. It's a really nice soft matte foundation. I think the name of the product really describes how it looks on the skin. It's mattifying, but it's not like a heavy flat look. Um, the key with it I have found is just not to apply too much because the first time I applied it, I tried to build it and um, I do feel like it kind of settled in my pores when I tried to build it. So, And it offers really great coverage without much product needed, so you don't really need to layer it and build it. Yeah, I think the combination of this foundation and that primer really does soften my pores and my texture. I found this foundation to wear really well throughout the day too. Um, the day that I did my foundation wear test, it was actually one of my more active days. I had a couple doctor's appointments, so I was wearing a mask a lot of the day. I went to the grocery store um, and then I, I cleaned out my car, which if you clean out your car in Texas in the summer, it's like you're like a big sweaty mess afterwards. And um, it still looked really good, so I'm a fan. I think the key is just, again, not applying too much because that first day I, I didn't think that I was gonna like it, but I applied too much. Like, I don't know if you saw what I first distributed, but this is how much I have left. I'm actually gonna leave that on my hand and not use any more than needed. The first day I didn't wanna waste it, so I went back and grabbed what was left and tried to just, you know, blend it in and it ended up settling in my pores. Okay, and then I always like to, especially when I'm going with like a matte or full coverage foundation, really kind of buff in little circles around the jawline so you don't have that harsh line of a foundation. All right, perfect. Okay, the great thing about this foundation too is it doesn't oxidize, so it doesn't change colors throughout the day, which is nice. Um, and next I'm gonna go in with a NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I have the shade uh, Light 2.75, and I'm just gonna use my finger to apply this. What I've noticed about this concealer, I've worn it a couple of days, is I really like when you first apply it, it has a really pretty, like soft, creamy look. It's not a real dry texture, but it's definitely not a real creamy and hydrating texture, um, which concealers are tricky, right? You don't want them to be too dry because then it just accentuates fine lines and texture, but when they're real creamy and hydrating, sometimes they don't really stay really well. They move a lot on the skin. This one is a good 
a softer matte, <laughs> hence the name texture. But what I did notice about it is it did fade on me throughout the day. Uh, so you wanna make sure you apply enough, okay? So I I'm gonna apply a little layer like that and I'm gonna go back and add a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna take um, a beauty sponge and I'm gonna work it right there in the inner corner. And to add a little more, I'm actually gonna use the beauty sponge. That way I add a little more, but I don't um, get too heavy handed with it. I'm just gonna use the tip, this is the BK Beauty Sponge. I love this tip for concealer. I'm just gonna dig it right in there and we are going to build a little more right here in the inner corner because that's where I uh, have more darkness that needs to remain covered all day. So pretty, so bright. Okay, I'm gonna set everything and for that I'm just gonna use a tr my tried and true Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. And I'm going to set right under the eyes. And then I'm gonna set the center of the face and this area where I have larger pores and more texture. Okay, so for uh, cheeks and for bronzer and blush, I'm gonna dig into this palette by uh, Pixie. It's the Summer Glow Palette. And this was sent to me, I don't know, about a month or so, and I haven't had an opportunity to play with it. Uh, so you get nine multi-use shades. Uh, bring out your natural sun kissed glow and add some highlights to your features with this multi-use palette. Silky natural mineral powders and a mix of matte and glowing finishes for a sheer luminous bronze effect. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy open. I'm always mesmerized when I walk by the Pixie display at Target. All of the, the products just look like I want them all. Okay, this is really, really beautiful. Definitely screams summer. You've got some bronze, some warm peachy kind of apricot shades, and then you've got some highlights that have a more cool tone pink. Really, really, really pretty. Uh, I am gonna do, I think we're gonna do this color here for bronzer and maybe pop a little bit of this color here on the cheeks. Yeah, that's a nice, pretty, like, peachy pink. And then this looks like a good, really warm bronzer shade for me. So we're gonna apply those too. Uh, let's see, for a brush, I'm gonna use my BK Beauty 107 for the bronzer, and I'm gonna use it for the blush too. But I'm gonna be real light-handed because I don't know how um, heavy this goes on. And actually, this brush is gonna pick up, it's kind of dense, so it's gonna pick up a lot of product. So I wanna make sure that I don't pick up too much. I'm gonna start here at my hairline and just kind of press. That's pretty. This is a color that I think would work well for bronzer or blush on um, kind of light medium skin tones. I like to kind of gently smile when I'm placing my bronzer so I can really see where I want to place it. Pretty. Yeah, that's really warm. It definitely, it actually kind of looks more like a, like a blush color. I'm gonna work it into the hairline. Kind of dust a little bit on my nose, whatever is left. Okay, then I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna dip it in that pinkier shade and we're gonna just pop that right on the cheeks. Okay, so both shades are matte, so I do find that you kinda of have to work with them to blend them in. They've got a decent amount of color uh, payoff, so they don't go on real sheer, but they don't go on like real intense either, kind of a moderate level of pigment. All right, then I'm gonna use one of the Salt New York highlighters to kind of highlight the cheekbones a bit. I'm gonna just go into this one. I think this one is called Pearl. I'm gonna use my finger, warm it up. Uh, and then I'm gonna kind of tap it on my hand just so that I don't get too much. And we're just gonna apply this right here on the nose a little bit, right here on the Cupid's bow. Um, we're also gonna tap it right here on the orbital bone and the highest point of the cheekbone. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little brush, just my 108 and blend it. And you can take the brush too if you want to make it a little more natural. Perfect, okay, good, so skin is done. Next we're gonna go in with brows and I actually am gonna be using a new brow product here, believe it or not. This is by Revita Lash. This was a sample that was given to me with a purchase that I made. It's the High Def Tinted Brow Gel by Revita Lash Cosmetics. And what is um, confusing to me is if this is actually a lash growth serum, or an, I'm sorry, a brow growth serum, or if it's just a makeup product. On the sample that it, it didn't really, um, it wasn't really clear if this has the brow serum in it, because Revita Lash does have a brow product, but um, it, it, didn't, it didn't say it clearly on the sample. So what I'll do before I upload this video is I'll get on their website and I'll see what I can find and I'll include it in the description box below if this actually is like helps your brows grow or if it just is a makeup product. 
I put this on last night, just kind of playing with it, and it was after I washed my face, and so this morning when I woke up, I was rubbing my brows, and I was like, what? Why do my brows feel so gritty? And it was because I had this. But I am impressed with the amount of pigment that comes out of this. A lot of brow gels will be really tinted and sheer. I feel like this has a good amount of coverage. The wand is pretty large, though. I'm not really a fan of these really large wands for brows. I like them to be smaller so that I have more control. Um, but yeah, I was I was pleased with the actual, like, the way that the product applied. Moving on to eyes, I'm going to be using a new eyeshadow base. This is by Alter Ego. I haven't even opened this yet, so I have no idea what it looks like, how it applies. Um, this was sent to me along with some matte lipsticks that we're going to be wearing, some liquid lipsticks. And then I got the um, Alter Ego palette that I'm going to be using in a video coming up. Okay, so this is what the product looks like. It kind of looks like a mascara wand. So I assume it has like a doe fit applicator. Yes, it does. Okay, good. I like applicators like this. Let's see. Okay, so it's got a tint of color, but it is pretty transparent. You guys know that that's my favorite type of um, primer, is something that is sheer, that doesn't have any shimmer or color to it, but that has a soft brightening effect on the lid. So I like that. It doesn't feel too thick or sticky at all. It feels uh, very, very lightweight. Okay, so we're gonna put this onto the eye, and I'm actually just gonna use my finger. Okay, this really shears out nicely, I like that. I don't want my eyeshadow primer to be real thick and pasty. I want it to be sheer, I want it to lay on the skin, I want you to see the skin through it, and I want it to blend out nicely so that there's no patches. You don't want it to be too thick in certain areas and then like non-existent in others because then when you go and apply your eyeshadow, it's just like gonna stick to that area where there's too much. Okay, and then for um, eyeshadow, I'm gonna be using the NARS Extreme Effects Eyeshadow Palette. This, uh, I just got the other day, it came in this really cute, Mar NARS sends like the best packages. They send the most beautiful boxes. I got this other box for the foundation. Um, anyway, I just love their, their little PR sets that they send. So they sent this big envelope, which I'm gonna keep and use for something. All right, and then let's get into this palette and see what we are working with. Okay, so it looks like there are 12 shadows. This is kind of the color scheme. I like the packaging a lot. This is really cool. Okay, and then this is what the palette looks like. It's pretty heavy and weighted. All right, and then let's open it. Okay, so this is what all the shadows look like. So very warm, definitely very warm, a mix of mattes and some pretty shimmery shades there. Uh, like looking at the palette, this is probably like warmer than I would normally pick up. Um, but there are some really pretty bronze in here and the purples look really nice and wearable. Like when I wear color, kind of purple um, or garnet shade are, are kind of the shades that I lean towards. And this has some of that. So let's, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. So let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna take this shade right here. This is the lightest matte shade. And I'm just gonna kind of dust this uh, underneath the eyebrow. Oh, that's a little too dark for the brow. No, too dark. Darn, okay. We're gonna try and work this into the crease and we'll have to go back over that to fix that. Yeah, that's a little too dark for my brow highlight. So we're gonna work this into the crease and onto the lid. It is a pretty color though. Very, very soft, like peachy ivory shade. This would be a good transition color for, it's we're actually working for me when I build it, I get a good amount of color, but it'd be a really great transition shade for someone that's really fair. Okay, so we're gonna kind of work that in. Okay, next I'm gonna take this shade, it's like this matte pinky shade, and we're going to uh, work that into the crease. I'm gonna use the 202 brush, which just has more of a tapered tip, so you can kind of control it a bit better. I'm gonna work that right into the outer corner and the crease to warm and deepen that up a bit. Okay, the color payoff is really nice. You get a lot of color, but it's very soft and kind of like silky mattes, so they blend really nicely. Okay, oh, that's nice. Okay, next I'm gonna grab this purple shade here. It's another matte. I'm gonna work that into the outer corner. The combination that I really like is purples and like gold bronzy shades or like coppers. They're so beautiful together. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm working this right into my outer corner. So pretty. These mattes blend really nicely together. They're very, very silky. So they don't go on patchy. They go on really evenly and silky. 
Nice. Okay, next I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pack this real bronzy shade onto the lid. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of a penny, very pretty. And I would use my finger, but my lashes get in the way. So we're just gonna use the 203 brush by BK Beauty. And I'm gonna load up the side. This is really nice. And I'm gonna concentrate that right in the inner corner and the middle of the lid. I'm gonna try not to take it and cover that color on the outer corner. So nice. Oh yeah, coppers and purples together, so beautiful. So pretty. All right, then I'm gonna take this shade right here. It's the lightest shimmery shade. It's kind of like a real icy um, shimmery shade, kind of champagne-ish. I'm gonna grab the same brush and we're gonna pop that right in the inner corner. Pretty, okay. And we're gonna bring it down and put it right on the lower inner corner, right there, so nice. Okay, next, let's see. Okay, looking in the palette, I really wanna play with this shade right here. It's the shimmery, like pinky purple. Oh, that's so beautiful. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that on my 202 brush and we're gonna pop it on the outer corner and we're also gonna line the lower lash line with it. You're gonna see more punch of color on the lower lash line because I'm gonna use it by itself. I'm not gonna be layering it like I, oh, that's so pretty. This is gorgeous. This reminds me of the sunset, like a really vibrant sunset. Okay, all right. So now that I have a lot going on in the crease, I'm gonna go back and take my fluffy blending brush. I'm not gonna apply any more product on top of it. This just has that initial first color. And I'm gonna kinda just swirl it on my hand just so that there's really no shadow. And I'm gonna use it just to, I'm gonna go over the crease, you know, just a few times to make sure all the colors are blended together. When you really layer and build colors like that, I mean, guys, we went all the way from this to this in the crease, okay? We started out here, we ended up here, and we used all these different shades to transition to this. You wanna make sure that they all seamlessly blend together. So this is a great little tip to do, to ju just go back. But don't do it too much. If you do it too much, then you lose that like gradient effect. Okay, next we're gonna go in, we're gonna use the same shade, but I'm gonna pack this on my lower lash line, and I'm gonna use a very small, um, I'm, I'm like dropping brushes here. A very small uh, like smudge brush. I'm trying to see what I have. I have the 207, but that's even too big. I don't wanna use that. Um, let's see, let's see. I might need to grab another brush. I will be, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use the 219 by MAC. It still is kind of big, but it has a more pointed tip than my BK Beauty one. And I want something that kind of controls it a bit more. So I don't want it to be too smoky. I want it to be real intense. So I'm gonna grab this and we're gonna go right underneath, oh, look at that, oh my gosh. That on its own is so beautiful, wow. That is gorgeous. That is stunning. I kinda wanna put that all over my lid next time. That is so beautiful. And I'm really impressed with the color payoff for such a sparkly shadow. I mean, you get you get the intensity of the color just as much as you get the intensity of that shimmer. It's not flaky. It doesn't really, there's really a, not a lot of fallout. I mean, a normal amount, but normally when I work with shadows that are this sparkly, you you're, you compromise on color. You don't have that much color and you have a lot of sparkle that falls out. Not the case with these. That is so beautiful. Okay, I, I'm kind of loving that. And I bet if you wet the brush and applied that, it would be even more intense. That is so gorgeous. That is gorgeous, I love that color. I don't know how many times I can say it, but. <laughs> okay, for mascara, we're gonna use one of the new Mar NARS mascaras that I received. I know I'm kinda limited because I just have my lower lashes, but I did receive two mascaras, these two. Look at the fun packaging of these, I love them. So one is the Climax Extreme Mascara, Uncensored Black, and then one is the Climax Mascara Explicit Black. Is there a difference between these two? Let me see what the difference is. Let's see, I have a little card here, so I wanna read you guys the difference. 
Uh, okay, Climax Extreme Mascara. Uncensored, unparalleled, don't hold back. Climax reaches its peak with the most dramatic volume yet in just one coat. Now loaded pigment complex, uh, new loaded pigment complex and extra, extra large ribbed bristles. Brush instantly creates explosive volume with latex-like black pigment from root to tip. Maximum volume, minimum effort. Take it all away with extreme effects. Okay. So what is the difference though between these? Climate extreme, okay, so one's just extreme and then one is regular. Okay, well let's do the regular because I'm doing it on my lower lash line, my lashes and I don't want to have like, I don't want it to be too much. Okay, yeah, that did, that did a pretty good job. That's nice. Okay, for lips, uh, I have a new product by Alter Ego. Let's see where, where did it go? Here it is. It's the liquid lipstick, uh, matte liquid lipstick, and this is the shade Crush. So I'm gonna get this out. I have a little bit of lip balm on my lips, but that's it. Uh, really like the packaging of this. It's really pretty, very beautiful. Okay, now you guys know I'm hard to impress with a liquid lipstick. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so this is a little bit brighter than I would like to wear with this eye, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. The color's pretty. It's pretty, it's not what I would normally pair with this eye, but I'm gonna tone it down with the lipstick, I mean with the lip gloss. Okay, it feels very lightweight and it feels very silky. I feel like that's the theme of today's video, silky, silky. But it really does. Like it's, it's uh, I have a very thin layer of it. I didn't apply much and it gives complete color coverage over the lip. I can feel it starting to dry now. Initially, when you first apply it, you have a really nice, comfortable feeling on the lips. I'm starting to feel it dry, like all liquid lipsticks do. Still feels pretty comfortable. All liquid lipsticks should start to dry after a few minutes. You know, the, the whole thing about liquid lipsticks is they're known to be very, very long wearing. The, I, the goal, of course, is to find a comfortable liquid lipstick, something that doesn't feel like if you smile too big, you're gonna have cracks in your lips. This feels very comfortable. There's a little bit of a stickiness to it, which I like. Okay, so it is pretty much dry. There is still a comfortable like flexibility to it, but it's definitely dried. Let's see. Okay, it hasn't completely dried yet because it's transferring on my, on my um, hand. Let's give it another minute. But it feels very comfortable. It doesn't feel uh, tight or too dry at all. And it looks good. It's definitely matte, but it doesn't look dry. Okay, now that that has dried, I'm gonna add a little bit of lip gloss and I'm gonna use this gloss. It's called Apricot Dream and it's by Oprah Cosmetics. Oprah, did I say Oprah? <laughs> Oprah Cosmetics. And it is uh, like a nude shimmer shade. Very, very sheer. I've worn this a couple of times and the color is very sheer, so it is going to not really change the color of this too much. It'll just give it a little bit of a shine. I wanna kinda of lighten it a little bit just cause the eyes are so much that I want the lips not to compete with that. So I feel like adding a uh, sheer gloss will help settle the lips a bit. It just makes them look a little softer. Okay, pretty. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So pretty, so pretty. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I have to say, I really like the way the eyes came out. I'm trying to kind of step out of my box and be a little bit more glamorous in my makeup tutorials, kind of stay within my neutral kind of comfort zone, but bump it up a notch. And I really, really like this. So I will have all the products that I use and shade names listed in the description box below. As always, thank you guys for spending 20 minutes of your day with me and hanging out. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.